the reality of being a stewardess, gosh, I don't know, guys. I've lost it. <laughs> was, it was it the liberating experience that you hoped it would be? And if not, why? Being a stewardess at that time, you did know your place as a woman. Uh, your place as a woman was to be pretty, was to be gracious, was to be social, but you didn't have to be too bright. And my tardy mouth <laughs> used to give me a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> uh, it was fun to zing. Uh, you'd get the comment, I can remember when I hit it uh, in my late 20s, a passenger saying to me, for instance, and how long have you been flying? Because obviously I wasn't 20. I was 28. And I can remember saying, oh, eight years, and looking at him and saying, and how long have you been with your job? And of course, he was a man of about 60. And he did not, he thought that, I, I could see that he was not pleased with my question back. There was a liberty that one could take asking a stewardess anything they wanted to. That's still kind of today. But in a sense, it was even more so then because we were the fly girls. We were um, used to all. Uh, they could not hurt our feelings. Um, it hasn't totally changed. But in your own consciousness, when things changed, how did they change? What did you see happening out there? I, I saw the uh, stewardesses at the time making changes. Uh, they were no longer content in being in a box. They, in fact, were rebelling against many of the things that management was dictating. They, in fact, were rebelling against the traditional uh, lifestyle that they grew up in as a, as a young girl and were now saying, that's not what I want today. They, in fact, were not only verbalizing it, they were now acting it out. Some took more extremes than others. Uh, some fought it with greater degree than others. But in all, we all shared this in common. We would all sit around initially and talk together our feelings on, well, why are we thought like this? Is it ever possible for us to become a vice president of this company? Uh, why are we not being paid the same amount? And we also knew, which is off the subject, that if we were feeling this way, we had many black counterparts that we were particularly felt sorry for because they even had it harder than we did. So there was that element thrown into it that the, that the equal rights brought out all segments of inequality. And of course, I, I flew with several black flight attendants that were mavericks. They were the first flight attendants in the sky, period. So they had a double whammy. They had a double degree that they were fighting against. Uh, there was an awareness that things weren't good. They weren't fair. They weren't equal. There had to be changes. Uh, I too would have burned my community. That's how you make change. And I, I, I you know, am certainly not um, a terrorist, <laughs> but I think you have to sometimes do the extremes in order to see some moderation. At the time, we were an extreme. Our job was an extreme. Uh, nurses had it very much the same way. They. If you wanted credibility, you only talk to the doctor. If you want credibility about a flight, you talk to the pilot. I mean, what's this female know? Uh, when we would tell a passenger why we had a delay, unless they heard it from the captain, they really didn't believe us. We're dumb. You know, we're just this dumb little female. It was very much more pronounced then. Well. I think what women felt, and what I in particular was feeling, was that I was not alone. That I wasn't the only one going home and in fact taking a second look at my husband saying, you know, I think I have the short end of the stick here. Uh, I have a right to talk. I have a right in a conversation when there's a group of us. My viewpoint is just as valid as yours. 
I think we were willing to stand up and get get slugged, slug it out if necessary to make our point known. Because we share that amongst ourselves, that probably gave us the encouragement to continue on on that path, that we weren't alone. We were all feeling it. I in particular felt it. And I made sure that my husband knew I was feeling it. He wasn't, he, he could no longer expect me to be as his mother was with his father because I wasn't going to do that. I wanted more. It didn't make for harmony, but it did make for change. How did you start to realize this? How did it manifest itself? It manifested itself by making me somewhat of an angry person. It made me angry. Uh, it very possibly could have put a chip on my shoulder. Uh, I didn't necessarily uh, follow the rules as I always had in the past. It was, it was kind of liberating to know that I could speak out on it. And I knew that I had lost 50% uh, of the people listening to me if they were men. But I had also gained an aha <laughs> from the women that were in the room when we spoke about it. So there was a lot of anger. It, was, it had to go to that extreme level. Uh, there was an edge, and the edge was felt by all. I don't, th I don't think that society realized that it was just the tip of the iceberg, that it was just starting to mushroom. I had an aunt that was very liberated, that had worked all of her, her life, and was very active in female organizations. And we, even though she was a generation older than I, had much in common. She could relate to me the unfairness of life throughout, and I could view it from today's point of view. I think the biggest change that I made was not being agreeable with men on a topic. If I didn't agree, I said I didn't agree. Uh, I felt that I had every right to my opinion, even though it was not a popular opinion. In regards to my job, I think that our only recourse in verbalizing it was through our union. On an individual basis, our supervisors were women. So they understood where we were coming from. They weren't able to change it, but I think they understood it. Most of them were ex-flight attendants or stewardesses. Mm -hmm. So there was a definite uh, understanding. Uh, I can remember um, a lady that used to be at the head of uh, the domicile at that time she would always try and get one of her superiors, if he were a man, to put her point across if it were important. Because she knew that if she presented the idea in a form of a board meeting, it would have been turned down. And she needed to have the male point of view, or the male giving her point of view, and therefore it could be accepted. But it's not much different today. I know you don't want to hear that, but it really isn't. <laughs> I think I've come, uh, I think I've come far. Uh, I have a new husband. He's not new, it's many years, but I mean, it's a different husband from the 60s. Uh, and I think being divorced during that time was part of it. Um, my husband now of 16 years, uh, I, I no longer, ha I don't have to fight for what I am. I have to tell you, I'm still doing the female jobs at home. In addition to uh, working just as hard. Kind of tired of fighting for those things. It's just easier to do them. And yet he's, my present husband, a 
future husband, I don't want to make it sound like that, um, is a lot different than I think he was when he was 22. Uh, he's very capable of cooking. He's very capable of cleaning. Uh, he knows when I get home and I'm tired, and he knows I'm really tired, he will pitch in and do it. My father wouldn't even know how to do that. So yes, we have come a long ways, and yet we really haven't, we don't have utopia, and there, not that there ever will be. I think today that a woman is very productive on the job, very responsible on the job, and she gets home and she is still wife and mother. And I think she's still going home and making sure that she has done the grocery shopping, she's making sure that there is food on the table, and she's making sure that the house is clean. Did the 60s play a role in your mind in, in the changes that have taken place? 60s the 60s prepared me, us, for today. Uh, the, and I can only judge that by looking at my mother. My mother is a much more dependent person, always has been. She was not required to be independent. She was discouraged from it. Consequently, in her older years, she falls very easy into that dependency of my father. I doubt that I or my generation will do that. I think that we will be viewed more as an equal. We have certainly carried the responsibility of being an equal. And I think man, men have found us to be good partners. And I think once you get around to realizing it, we really do work quite well together. We don't need labels. Uh, the 60 prepared us for that. Uh, they were hard, turbulent times. <clears throat> Excuse me. But they prepared us for the 2000s. Our children are not being raised as I was raised. They're much more aware. Uh, they, a little girl does not, she would be a doctor. I would encourage my, my daughter to be a pilot over a flight attendant. I would encourage my daughter to be a doctor or a lawyer, possibly even a fireman. I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, and it's okay. And you don't lose your femininity by being a, in a typical male job. There is no such thing as a male job today. And yet I read in the paper and it says that women are wanting to get into the boys club. And I really think to myself, who wants to get into the boys club? <laughs>